All right, so thank you for joining us today as we're chatting about the French program at the University of Auckland. Um, my name is Janine and I'm here, I'm joined here by two instructors of French language. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Kia ora, bonjour everybody. My name is Deborah Morrison. I am Associate Professor of French here at the University of Auckland. Bonjour, my name is Viviane Lelievre Lopez. I'm also a teacher here at University of Auckland, have been for the last 10 years. Okay. Um, and for anyone watching us live, if you have any questions that come up as we're chatting, um, please just pop those into the uh, chat box and then we'll do a little Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So just as they come up, you can um, type your questions in the chat box. Um, but Deborah, if you'd like to share your slides with us, we can get going. Okay, so we'll start by just um, going through um, options of studying French at the University of Auckland, a, a rundown of our courses, our language courses, our research. But then if I can share my screen, this is going to work. Um, can you see that? No. No? Okay, getting out of here. I will. Sorry, I will start again. How was that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. There we go. Um, so, for students who are thinking about studying French with us at the University of Auckland, there are lots of different options to study French. If are really passionate about French and you want to make it a major, um, then you can do that. Um, you may know that the Bachelor of Arts now has a double major, so you do two majors with eight courses per each major, one of those could be French. Um, if you're doing a double degree, a conjoint, then you don't have to do two majors in arts, but you could still make it in French um, with a conjoint, whether that's arts and law, commerce, engineering, Etc. We get lots of students, actually, lots of French majors who do in commerce, particularly law and commerce. Um, apart from the major, you can also do a three course module in French or any other modern languages, actually. So that's three courses in the language. I um, have to note that these don't also count for the major, right? You can either do three language courses as a language module, or you can include your language courses in a major, but you can't count those things. Um, also, if you are doing a degree program that doesn't allow you to do as many language courses as you would like to, can enroll in either a certificate or a diploma in languages, which is outside your main degree program. So um, students can study French as a certificate for a certificate in languages. That's four courses. Um, you can actually do two languages. If you want to do more, um, you can enroll directly in a diploma or you can transform your certificate into a diploma in languages. And that's eight courses. So the diploma is actually, it can be the major um, if it's in one languages, but you can do it in two. And with the certificate and the diploma, there's also the possibility of cross-crediting one course in the cert and two courses in the diploma. Um, so one of your courses, the certificate could be within your bachelor's degree and it could also be counted. And two of those in the diploma, which is really important. Um, um, Deborah, sorry, I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing you. I wonder if you could be closer to your mic. Sorry about that, is that better? Maybe Speak a little bit louder. I think so, yeah. Is that better? Um, so there's the option of a major, a module um, within the degree. There's the option of a full course certificate outside of your degree. So in addition to a degree program or an eight course diploma. Um, also, the University of Auckland has been offering for a couple of years now, the very popular Bachelor of Global Studies program and within the Bachelor of Global Studies all students must do four course four courses in one language and that language obviously 
and other bachelors may allow up to two electives in a language. So lots of different ways in which students can fit French into their degree program at the University of Auckland. And if you want more information on our courses, that's linked to our web page. Um, this is our team, obviously with me. Um, and Viviane, also Professor Tracy Adams, who's a speci uh, specialist in medieval French, Trudy Yeager, who's a specialist in literature and Francophone literature and cultural studies, and Viviane, who is here with us today and who's a specialist language teacher. So um, Viviane, would you like to run us through the language courses? Yes, um, thank you, merci. Um, so one of our great strengths here is that we can welcome students at total beginner level or directly into a more advanced uh, stage two or exceptionally stage three courses, depending on their um, experience in high school. So um, a total beginner course 101, we teach it in a blended learning format, three hours of teaching a week and quite a lot of online content, um, very state of the art in, um, interactive exercises um, that Deborah and myself to some degree have developed over the years. And so um, you can start as a total beginner level. Um, 102 and 203 are also in a blended learning format. And typically we have students coming into uh, 103 if they've done NCEA 3 and are not quite yet confident, as confident as they could be, but are very strong students who have done NCEA level 3 uh, or Cambridge might go straight into French 269, which is a wonderful both language and introduction to culture paper, which is a really great way to go and to get started in your university career. Um, then um, as you progress throughout the semester, French 204, which corresponds to a very strong DELF uh, B1 for those who are familiar with that system. And then finally, we have French 304 and 305, um, which are the advanced stages of DELF B2, where not only do we teach French in a communicative setting, but we also um, teach not just grammar language features, but also the very strong academic uh, types of writing, uh, résumé de texte, synthèse de document, compte rendu, dissertation, um, those kinds of things. Um, the 305 we're, we're just finishing this week has been particularly strong, even with COVID. Um, they've all presented a weekly JT, which is uh, the weekly news. Um, and I was really blown away with how they've bringing, how they've brought together their learning to be able to present that. And after this, they can become French teachers. So um, we're very um, with training as a teacher, but as far as pure French content. So we're quite demanding in what we expect of our students. It's not an easy pass, you know, course. Some students feel um, taking a language course at university, it's just gonna be four hours a week and that's it. No, it's intensive, it's demanding, but it's very rewarding. At least I think so, and I think our students do as well. And just to reinforce what Deborah have said, um, of course, you can take these as part of your major, but a number of students do conjoin their majors and they find that these language courses, French or other, is really that breath of fresh air. It's a different kind of learning since it's based on a communicative approach. There's lots more individual expression, a great relationship usually with the teachers and their peer group. Um, we'll talk a bit later about how that extends through um, uh, the uh, overseas experiences and the French club. So for a number of students, it is quite an extra added value and just another experience that they seem to really enjoy. And the content courses as well, which I think Deborah will present now. Which, um, yeah, which we'll talk about now. So we have our language courses. Um, oh, Vivian, do you want to talk oh. about first-time enrollment before we go on? Yes. Um, so the first-time enrollment, now this, I, I want to actually stress this a little bit because that can be one of the trickiest factor for students coming in straight from um, high school. Because if they are total beginners, um, then they will um, ha fill in what is called a language proficiency declaration to certify that they have not spoken French before. If they have some learning, either through because they're um, heritage speakers, they've studied French in high school, they visited. Then on SSO, they will ask for what is called a concession for requisites not met. Sorry, so the LPD is for total beginners. And Deborah, if you can move on just a bit. Yeah, the concession request for non-beginners is um, quite a sophisticated 
program where we get to see your the students experience in French, I will ask them probably to sit a placement test to devise their best level. And then quite often I will also see them in an interview in January or February, so that we can really target the best possible class for them. We don't want students to waste their time, um, you know, doing a class that would be too easy for them. And we don't want them to put them in a situation where they would be overwhelmed by a level that's too difficult. So the grades they have at the NCA is a great indicator, but we also have this in place um, with the placement test, with the interviews to help them really pinpoint um, where to best place them and how to best start their language journey at the university. Yeah. Um, so um, moving on now to our content courses. So courses, non-language courses, and we cover a pretty wide range of topics from film, history, linguistics, to um, the French speaking world. So language, linguistics, history, literature, film, and combinations of those depending on the courses. Um, we also teach translation at stage mm -hmm. three. The University of Auckland has a very strong postgraduate translation program. And um, our students often start in translation at three level and um, quite a few of them choose to, to go on. Um, so that's just a, an overview of our content courses, which are taught actually by all of us. Vivian teaches the linguistics course. And those of us who are also involved in research tend to teach content courses that um, feed off and feed back into our research interests. Um, me, for example, my research interests are quite broad. Um, I'm primarily um, a film um, teacher and researcher, French film. Also, you, I teach into European cinema and I'm very interested in Maori cinema. I have um, even connections on my father's side. My father's whānau are Maori, so I'm really also interested in Maori cinema. And um, as far as French film is concerned, I've done a lot of work on film noir, so dark crime dramas, if you know what that's about. Um, I lived in New Caledonia for 10 years when I was in my 20s, and that gave me an interest in Francophone Pacific literature, particularly um, New Caledonia, and I continue to work with writers in New Caledonia. Um, we, Vivian was talking before about how our beginners are use a blended learning platform. So some online, some face-to-face -face in the classroom. I've also done some research. Um, so that's me. Um, and also I'm very, very interested in translation and particularly audio-visual translation except so much in film. And my colleague Trudy Agar also teaches translation. She's um, a specialist of Franco-Algerian literature. So main research focus and particularly women writers and Trudy's done also a lot of work on the Francophone world. So literature and also cultural studies. And our colleague Professor uh, Tracy Adams, who is a medievalist, so teach, she teaches and researches on medieval French and English literature. And she also, um, in connection with that, she also And uh, um, Vivian mentioned French 269, which is language and culture in film and literature. So it's a language course, but it's also a, cult, uh, a culture course. And the content of that course varies a little bit in terms of the work. Um, when I teach it, I focus on this year, looked at comedy. Sorry, Deborah, I can't hear you very well. With French 269, we focused on comedy and we looked at how a number of popular French comedies, including Antoine Chabla, which I'm sure some people here know and love. So we looked at how comedy, beyond making us laugh, um, reveals aspects, you know, re really topical um, issues in French culture, whether that's, um, whether it's religion, whether it's how class and race intersect 
um, for example, and, and to Chable. So those are, these are just some of the things that you might call. I mentioned um, we have the which um, in the last few years. Sorry, Deborah, we're, we are losing you again. Wrong. So I teach courses in cinema, I mentioned in literature, and cultural studies. Linguistics again. I don't know if you might, might want to say things before we just move on. Um, I just the linguistics, um, which I've taught. Um, I just want to um, pay homage. Actually, this course was created by Kevin Mondus, and I took over from him. And it's a really wonderful course for students both to work on their own linguistics to further the way they want to research how the language works, but also um, the last time I did it, I organized lots of um, uh, panels and also portfolios for students to learn how they would teach this aspect of the language, you know, whether it be phonetics or syntax, um, if they were themselves teachers. So I, I, I had a blast with this course, I admit. Um, and I think yes. students got a lot out of it as well. Yeah. I know they did, they really got through. Um, and do you want to talk a little bit about our overseas experience? We finally have them again, which should be before students get to university. <laughs> Um, yes, I don't know how much time we have. I'll go quite quickly. Now, this year, of course, with COVID has put all of our fabulous exchanges kind of on hold. We had so many students who went off to Sciences Po, who went to Lesec, who went to universities in Paris, who went to um, different places, and it was tricky. However, we still have a number of possibilities. The University of Caledonia and Images, I actually lived in New Caledonia myself as well for four years. And um, in Noumea, we have this... Um, uh, summer school, un summer university semester in December that a number of my stage three students have gone to and it was mind blowing for them. It was a real immersion experience, um, co language, culture, events. Um, so that that's definitely and it counts as a semester of work. It's quite demanding, but um, it was really a wonderful experience. So during the summer, we have this University of Caledonia, and we also have one, not this coming year, but as soon as COVID is away, I think in the next slide, which is both um, La Sorbonne and also in a homestay situation in um, Vichy. There we go. I'm sorry, in Paris and then in Vichy. And some of our former students here are in pictures. So there are a number of opportunities. COVID notwithstanding, <laughs> we're going abroad. We can do a full summer, full semester exchange with 360, where they take a number of courses in French at lots of quite prestigious French universities um, and a grande école. When I know that some of my students went to Les Secs or Sciences Po and myself coming and brought up in Paris, know how hard it is to get into those schools. They're wonderful opportunities. This is Miro, who went to Sciences Po, who's a wonderful student and who had quite an, uh, quite an exciting semester there. She's giving us some testimony and some great feedback for future students as well. So lots of different places in, in France and New Caledonia that they can to go to. So as I said, both a full semester abroad or even creating our own study abroad plan uh, through the network of Alliance Francaise of universities and of other schools. So we can really tailor experiences to students levels, to how much time they have, to where they want to go. Um, some have family, etc. So and do, you want, do you want to finish by talking about our lovely French club? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. And all of this comes together with our three members that you see here, among others, who have all gone on these exchanges and they organized the French club. Um, this year, a new guard has come in and they are very dynamic. They organize lunches, they organize cinema evenings, they organize outings, pétanque, and more importantly, they also organize mentoring programs. So the stronger students without, you know, my one, my beginner 101s or even 204 before tests, uh, conversations, etc. They're a great bunch of students and they're so motivated. It's quite humbling actually. So um, yeah, that's the French club, whom, which I, I support and I encourage every student to take part of, whether they take French classes or not actually. A number of members stay in the French club after they've finished some of their French courses and it keeps that love of language alive. Thank you. So that's us. Yeah. That's our program. Okay, that's that was all really great information. Um, so we don't have any questions, I think, in our chat box yet. But if you um, if you're watching this and you have some questions for us, please just type them in there and we will answer them. Um, but I might have some questions for you guys. Um, do you have um, 
any idea what students might do once they finish university if they've studied French, like what kinds of careers it might lead into? Deborah, you want to? Our, our students do all kinds of things, some of which require them to use their French and some don't. But um, in terms of sort of quite high pro profile students that we have had go through French in the past um, and who have used their French to build quite stellar careers, um, we had a student. Um, this is, I'm going back now, 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago, when I first started teaching actually at the University of Auckland, one of our students was doing, who did a conjoint in law, as many do, um, he went to New Caledonia, was married there, um, settled there, and became an advisor to, because of, you know, he was able to do that because he had a very good level in French. He ended up becoming an advisor government at one point then he was and I think he still is in the South CPS the um, South Pacific Forum so he's very high up in that organization for example we had another student again who did law and French and I'm still in touch with who um, ended up living in France and he didn't do anything with his law degree, but the fact that he had French enabled him to get a job with a quite a well-known New Zealand company called Orion Health. And he ended up being the regional European marketing manager for Orion Health. Um, and he never actually studied marketing, studied law, but it was in fact his French um, that gave him the openings in Europe. Yeah, so I mean, many of our students go on to be teachers. Some of them do the graduate um, diploma or master's in translation and combine, trans some of them combine translation and teaching. But, you know, we have had a number, those are just a couple that come to mind of students whose French takes them into fields that they wouldn't actually have considered, um, you know, when, when they started off degrees. Um, we've also had, we've had a couple of students who have combined engineering and French, and France is a very strong, um, you know, as a country, has a very strong engineering background. And so in terms of being able to travel combinations, you know, those combinations, students find them very powerful. Many of our students say that having the language and this would be true of other, other languages as well, I think, you know, um, French or Spanish or, or an Asian language, having that combination of skills um, really enables you to um, often have an edge. This is what our students say. Plus they enjoy language. Um, pretty much all of our students, Viviane, you can speak to this. No, no. <laughs> Love, they love our classes. They love studying French. Yes, just to confirm, um, yeah, lo lots of people think, yeah, you you can only become a teacher after studying French, and some of our great students have become teachers. Actually, one of my former students was a teacher at my son's high school, which is funny, you know, um, and some also through the um, opportunities abroad, also the Assistana, where they can become English teachers in French high schools, that opens up a whole other avenue in France, in New Caledonia, in, in Tahiti, um, other opportunities. But as Deborah was also saying, it's those students who combine skills that can take them different places. Uh, you mentioned engineering, science as well. I had a former student who was doing chemistry and of course she was looking at working in a French lab and she managed to get some um, contacts there through her French as well. Um, so with the global studies um, diploma as well, we mustn't neglect that opening of lots of people are putting their law and also the notions of diplomacy. Lots of students are attracted to ONGs and other humanitarian endeavors. Um, the Lab Citoyen, um, which Gussie, one of our former students, was part of, is a great initiative and gives a certain visibility to that, both the language and their other core strengths as well.
So yes, there isn't just one answer. You can do tons of things with um, French as part of your diploma. And uh, maybe actually to come back to um, Vivian, what you were saying about um, how our advanced language courses take students to a B2 plus in the, the European framework system that enables students to study, to go on an exchange in a French university and to actually take papers that are designed for French students rather than just taking courses that are designed for foreigners and, taught, and, and taught in English. So many of our students, when they go on exchange, um, they do those um, they do those courses because their level of French gives them entry into French university. Absolutely, and those can be history, commerce, um, business classes that would be taught in France to French learners as well. Yeah. Um, I had a, a question yesterday I would repeat, which is about class sizes. So how big are the French classes usually? Oh, good question. Yeah, yeah um, that's one of our strengths actually is so far, fingers crossed, we managed to keep, we have small classes. So I would say an average of 25, 25, 30 maximum. Um, yeah. Um, and then we have some of those remote classes for students who are abroad will have a remote stream next year. Um, but yes, we have small classes, which means that we have that one on one attendant. We have those small groups to be able to talk. And um, that's one of our great assets. I mean, it's not really a surprise when even students who, as I said, do law, do engineering, they always come to us and ask for references because they feel we know them the best and that they were able you know, to engage and to have that classroom experience. Um, that's what they really missed when they were online this year um, because it's so much harder to recreate through Zoom. Yes, that kind of classroom dynamic where you're all, you know, striving to learn together and for uh, the, main, um, the same goal. So yeah, small class sizes. In our content courses, I think Deborah, some of the classes are a bit bigger, but they remain quite- yeah, not, not very much bigger. Um, our non-language courses tend to be 20, 30, maybe up to 40 sometimes, but generally around the 20, 30. Actually, um, what you were saying, Vivian, reminded me, I should um, mention at this point that as from 2021, and this has been an offshoot of, of COVID and having to teach remotely, um, we've decided to set up remote streams of a certain number of our language classes. And those that remote stream will mean that students attend class via Zoom online. I think probably most students are, are, have gotten quite used to that. Um, they will come on campus for tests and exams um, if they are in Auckland. But we are experimenting with this mode um, to attract students whose timetables make it tricky for them to come onto campus. And within that, within that cohort, um, we are thinking that there might be some young scholars from the high schools, um, particularly around Auckland, who, um, you know, who, for whom it might be a bit difficult to get onto campus, you know, um, twice a week, but who would like to take up French, and we're offering these in other languages also, um, or even continuing um, in their last year of high school, so that when they get to university, um, you know, they will start, they'll have a bit of a, a bit of a head start. So probably should, I should mention that. Um, yeah, the Young Scholar Program is really excellent. It's, yes. uh, it's a good and idea. so we're able to offer that remotely as of 2021. Mm -hmm. How exciting. There are also a number of scholarships. Yeah. Um, and those classes will be held at the end of the day, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're going to talk about scholarships. I was saying, you know more about this than I do, but there are also a number of scholarships that are offered to our French um, students that can be an added incentive and can help for study abroad and for specific projects. Yes, and you just need to go to the scholarships page, the university scholarships page. There are a number of options. Great, so it looks like we've got about a minute or two to wrap things up here. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add or would you like to tell us where we can find more information? Um, more information, you can go to our French web pages. Um, we will 
put, um, for anyone who would like, we will send you, we can send you, Janine, the PowerPoint that we showed. There are a couple of slides on there that we didn't show. Um, it will also have our emails and our emails are easily found on the university website. So we can make that available. I'll just type mine in the chat then because since I'm undergraduate advisor, um, which means that the port of call for any new enrollments or even any teachers, I would love to have more discussions. I, I've done quite a few visits in high schools, but I'd love to have more discussions with high school teachers and, um, and their students about the best avenues for their students. So I'll just type in my email in the chat, then you'll have it on record. It's also, of course, in the slide. And I look really forward. I love meeting new students coming to our open days and coming with, and you know, and new projects and yeah, lots of enthusiasm. That's me. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Deborah and Vivian, for joining me. And thanks for everyone who tuned in to uh, listen to us today. So thank you very much, Annie. Merci, Merci. Au revoir. À bientôt. Merci. Bye. Bye.